In this video, I'm gonna go through the install of the horns for this uh, Pilot RC Edge. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is sand the contact points of the horns with the glue. Uh, that basically removes this layer that is kind of shiny and will likely not stick very well to, to our glue. And here we don't really want to remove material, we just want to remove that shiny finish from, from the horn. And you can see here the difference between the original horn and the sanded horn. So it's just removing that shiny layer so that we get the, the epoxy to stick a bit better to it. Now that all the horns have been sanded on their contact area, I'm gonna go ahead and score that same area with the with the Sacto knife. Just a bunch of lines here. And again, this is the same idea as to um, to try to increase the surface area for the epoxy to grip and properly glue to the to the horn the best possible way. Now that the horns have been scored and sanded, um, I'm gonna go ahead and install the transmissions uh, on each pair of horns, um, and that will give me the right spacing between the between the horns. And one thing to note is that at least on this particular model, um, there's two different kinds of ball links. You can see this ball link here is symmetric on both sides. However, on this other side, it's different from one side to the other one. So this one is the one that we are gonna use on the servo arm side. The symmetric side is the one I will be using for the horn side. And even though the kit doesn't include the washers, I'm adding them uh, myself. I just tend to like the, the final result with washers on both sides a little bit better. Okay, so I have now all the horns set up with their linkages. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the horns with some alcohol to make sure that there's no um, dust or residue that will get in the way of getting a good addition for epoxy. Right, the horns are clean, now I'm going to test their feet and make sure that everything um, fits well with their respective surface. Uh, we don't want to get any surprises when we are um, using the, the epoxy on this, so first test feet, then glue them in place. So now here we're checking to make sure that the horn goes all the way down, that the horizontal plate doesn't stick out, and that things generally look well aligned and perpendicular to the surface. This looks pretty good. Okay, at this point I have gone through all the different horns, um, do a test run on all of them, make sure that they all fit properly in their respective surfaces. And for this I'm already using, as I mentioned before, the linkage install, which gives us the right separation and also the, the base plate. So we are ready to glue. A um, couple things to note before getting started. Um, some people like to remove the um, cutout here, the covering for the, for the base plate. Um, from what I've heard from a lot of the manufacturers, um, that top area there doesn't really do much structurally. Um, and a lot of people actually don't even bother removing that um, or a cover. I'm just gonna um, leave the covering the way it is um, because all of the gluing, uh, that bonding actually really, really happens here in the, in the horn. Um, the other thing to mention is the glues I'm gonna be using. 
Um, a lot of people like to use high sol. High sol is really good. That's what I use for uh, a lot of the work on the jets and the fiber jets. Um, for in cast airplanes, I've always just used any okay quality um, epoxy, either five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, doesn't really matter. Uh, today I'm just gonna be using a 30 minute uh, BSI uh, epoxy, and I'm gonna be using 30 minutes because I'm planning to go through all of the different horns um, in this airplane in, in one run. So the 30 minute uh, cure time will help me just have time to go through all of them um, and do a bit of cleanup to make sure everything is nice and neat. Uh, and again, before getting started, the key here is to have everything prepared, to have all the horns ready to go, you know which horn goes where, with the linkage installed, everything is clean already. Um, the other thing I have at hand is uh, alcohol and a lot of paper towels, a lot of these small paper towels. And that's because I'm gonna be um, cleaning pretty much as, as I go with every horn, I'm gonna be cleaning the, the excess epoxy that will kind of run out. Uh, and I wanna have clean um, paper ready to go at all times because it gets pretty messy if you try to reuse the same one over and over. Then important to mix things really, really well. Before getting started, I'm also gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. So I can keep track of the time. All right, that's pretty well mixed. That's a minute. I'm gonna go first inside the holes. And the goal is not necessarily filling the whole thing because those holes are really deep, but make sure that all the walls are well covered. I'm trying to touch both the walls, back and forth. I'm gonna go add now epoxy to the horn itself too. Make sure we have coverage on all sides. And you wanna add a good amount, but you don't wanna go too crazy because it's gonna end up just oozing out and making cleanup harder than it needs to be. I'm solving a bit here on the side walls. And I'm wiggling the horn a little bit to make sure that every little part of the of the slots have good coverage. And now I'm gonna start cleaning up all the excess epoxy coming out. Yeah, so that's pretty clean. I'm just gonna triple check that things are well aligned. We can leave this to, to set. And can move to the next one.
All right, it's been a few hours since the epoxy application on all of the horns, and this is the final result. You can see that even though when applying the epoxy and inserting the horns, the epoxy was oozing out, um, as long as you have time um, and use some um, alcohol, it cleans up very nicely, so you don't have to worry about it. As long as you are prepared beforehand with the, with the material you need to clean up.